Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back with more Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. And if you've been tuning in the last few weeks, we've been talking and discussing about the Bloodline timeline. And uh, we last left off with um, your cousin, uh, Yoko Zuna. That was 1992. So yeah. the next signing after 1992 would bring us to your other cousin, Rocky Maya Villa. So this is going to be in 1996. Okay. So when he first signed with the WWF, um, you know, he, he was the blue-faced, blue chipper, you know, come mm-hmm. on, baby, you know, kissing baby, shaking hands. The crowd really turned on him really quick. We all know the they history. They hated him. Yes, sir. Were you shocked at how much they hated him, like, right off the bat? No. I, I mean, you know, you, you, did you see, like, the outfit that he had on? He came in with that, you know, I don't know, it looks like it came from Avatar movie or something. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, his hairdo was, mm-hmm. it's a good athlete, you know, the name was strong. And it just, you know, I, I, for me, I just think it was bad timing. You know, it was bad timing for, you know, for, for Rock to come through. And I think the first time I seen him perform was when they came to Madison Square Garden. And, man, they booed, they booed the oos bad. I guess that's where all that Rocky sucks uh, chant started. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's him finding his way that uh, I kind of, you know, after, you know, coming from a family... Like this dynasty is, you know, his father, his his uh, grandfather, Uncle Alfonsica, and so forth. It was, I'm sure, it was a lot of pressure. You know what I mean? To kind of, you know, build your, you know, build your own footsteps coming through. You know, and yeah, but it, it, it took him, you know, not too long. I think that character, or in that outfit, didn't last. But I don't know, maybe about four months is that, right. if that. Right. And then next, you know, he switched up. Mm-hmm. You know. Switched up, and they dropped him with uh, the Nation of Domination. You know, switched out his his hair. You know, took his uh, those loud tights on. I mean, we've all done it before. I I I done it, and uh, you know, came out with the black tights, and then he kind of found found himself. You know, I think once they let uh, you know Rock, you know, get on the microphone, mm-hmm. and that's just him, just you know, showing his other. You know, charismatic side, you know, and 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 the rest was history. You know, before the uh, Rock joined the Nation of Domination, uh, yeah. you guys had a match at WrestleMania 13. Yeah, uh, you as the Sultan, and the Rock as the Blue Face Rocky Maivia. Please tell us about that uh, that uh, that match. No, it it was uh, you know when when I found out we were working together and knowing that this is Rock's uh, first WrestleMania, you know, I wanted to do my best to to be able to elevate him to, you know. But it was just so hard, you know, when you're... The missing puzzle was they just didn't like him, you know. And knowing that, you know, you're wrestling a guy that's from the Middle East, you know, how much baby face can, you know, can you get, right? Mm -hmm. But it just didn't work. And so we tried, you know. We tried, you know, we tried our hardest to, to get out there and you know, try to, you know, turn him to have the people like him and, you know, and so forth. We did, We even added in Iron Sheik. You know, Rock's father came out. We took bumps for him and, you know, we threw in all what we had uh, uh, with myself, Sheik, and, you know, and Rock and his father to try to elevate him to the, to the next level. And, you know, again, it's not his fault. Uh, you know, it's just, you know, wrong timing. Mm-hmm. You know, bad, you know, the, it's just wrong timing, you know, uh, during that time. But we had a great match. I felt we had a great match, you know, and, uh, you know, being that you know, I was honored to have his first match with him. And, uh, you know, the, the rest was history. We came back and just, you know, hugged each other and, you know, regroup and so forth. And, you know, just congratulations, you know, it's your first WrestleMania. And uh, now we just, you know, continue to move forward. And so, you know. He, he learned a lot from that match, you know, uh, on numerous things from, you know, what he needed to do, what he needed to learn, you know, moving forward as far as for his own, uh, for his own character or future, which way he wants to go with it. And, of course, you know, it, it didn't take long for him to figure it out. Right. Uh, as you know today, he's the biggest star in, you know, professional wrestling, past, present, and the future. 
you know, the Rock, he, he, he's one of these guys you can, uh, you can never replace a guy like this. He's just a gifted athlete, and I'm not just saying this because he's family, but I got to give him his flowers, man. You know what I mean? He opened up the door for a lot of the boys in Hollywood, you know, continue to, you know, crush Hollywood and, and that, you know. I remember uh, the story was that, you know, you know, first time he was taking time off from WWE to go to Hollywood to be able to do the Scorpions movie. Mm -hmm. And during that time, you know, there was a saying over there that some rumor was, I guess the producers in Hollywood didn't see a wrestler, you know, a big buff wrestler come over there and going to be a big movie star. Right. But at the same time, these producers didn't know what type of draw uh, The Rock was. And, you know, he had a small part in the movie, but the whole wrestling universe, WWE universe, all came out to come watch, you know, what, what this movie was, was right. because of him. Right, that was The Mummy. Yeah, oh, The Mummy. And then, he, and, and then he got The Scorpion, Scorpion King. King. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that, so so the power of this guy, you know, you, you can't you can't knock it, you know what I mean? Can't knock the way he does business because you know, he, he knows what he's doing and you just got to trust the process. What was the turning point where you were like, he's going to be a huge star like was there do you remember the exact moment was there a moment um you know what i uh i was more so paying attention to the to the process and the growth you know uh because i i seen him start from the first match opening up match and as he's just working himself up how they would book him on tv you know he, he would be like involved in certain spots you know, and hours of Monday Night Raw and, you know, SmackDown. And as he grew, you know, he started to, you know, uh, gain momentum. And uh, you can kind of see where the company is going. And uh, once they named uh, Friday, night, uh, Friday Night SmackDown to one of what he says, mm -hmm. we all knew, like, we can see that, okay, this guy here is going to be the face. Which he got from Dr. Dre. He oh, got, really? Yeah, he got smacked down from okay. a Dr. Dre song. Hey, they rock. Well, there you go. That doesn't yeah. surprise me because, yeah. again, all the Samoans, we all love hip-hop. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And a lot of those phrases, I'm sure, came from hip-hop. Um, you are one of the only few people who's known um, Dwayne, The Rock, um, his whole life. Do you have any uh, childhood memories, uh, or is there a significant childhood memory that stands out uh, to this day? Uh, about you guys? No, uh, well, just times in, uh, you know, Samoan Flag Day uh, back in the Bay Area. You know, his grandpa and his grandma used to live on Alamany Street, which is about a block away from uh, from the Cow Palace. And so, but this park was actually across the street from his grandpa's place, and we would have, like, Samoan Flag Day. Samoan Flag Day, it's uh, it's a culture day for us. And it would start on a Wednesday, and it would end on a Sunday. And what it does is it brings all the communities together, and it has, you know, all kind of uh, culture stuff, you know, from cricket, playing sports together. Uh, you know, they do, uh, 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 you know, songs and dances of, of the culture. And then they would, uh, you know, like a Lifetime Achievement Awards from certain Polynesian uh uh, uh, figures, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so, public figures. So, and Peter would be there. Uh, they would bring Pat Patterson there. Wow. You know, because these, these were like Peter's uh, good friends and so forth. But those days that we were young, man, you know, the, you know, my mom and his mom, and, you know, they were all there, his grandma, you know, the uh, Uncle Rock was there, you know. So he would be up on stage too as well. And, you know, just running around, you know what I mean? It was just a kid just you know, running around and, you know, like, like any other normal kid. And so, you know, but as we grew up, you know, they moved out, you know, they went out to uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania, you know, and now we know why, because as a wrestler, <clears throat> you're moving mm. from state to state, city to city to be able to move towards the company, to, you know, where they're wrestling and, and blah, blah, blah. So I really didn't never see him after mm. until, you know, seeing him in the, uh, college of miami you know and then unfolding into you know training and coming into the business wow so it, it was a long time last time 
I don't know, maybe seven years old, maybe. Yeah, seven years old, and then he took off, and you know we all went our way and so forth. And you know they lived out towards the East Coast while we were still in the Bay Area and so forth. And then finally, you know, we meet up. You know, years later. Wow. WrestleMania. <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah. Talk about full full turn, right? Full circle. Man, how how proud are you are uh, uh, of uh, Dwayne? I'm very proud of Dwayne. You know what I mean? Uh, on a personal level, he's he's a good guy. You know, he's a uh, very smart, intelligent, uh, a Samoan cat. You know, and uh, you know, very very uh, prideful of the things that he's laid out, and you know, doors that he's broken down, not only for you know our culture, and you know, it's good to see him represent our culture as well, and also his African American culture. You know, right. at the same time, right. and so you know. He's, uh, he's, we all see the American dream, right? You know, he talks about this all the time, hard work, you know, with your own two hands, you know, and and that's that's the real deal, man. Like, I, I'll tell my kids, nothing's free. There's going to be nobody come and knock on the door and hand you a paycheck unless you earned it and worked for it. And what he's done, he's conquered, you know, the wrestling world, came from the wrestling world, was said in the beginning, denied from Hollywood. He, he, you know, knowing him, he proved them, proved them wrong. And he just, you know, fly low, made all the right angles, did all the right work, all the right moves. And now he's the biggest, what, paying Hollywood star. Yep. And, and potentially could be our next president. And could I, be. And, and I tell you what, I'd vote for him. Uh, you know what? Because we need somebody. We need we need a hero, just like the song. And and I think, uh, man, I just think that he would really, honestly, be a good president. Hey, that wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah. You know, what I mean, I mean, he's already making moves into the White House. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. what I mean, so when does it stop for Rock? Like, That's what I'm saying. when is it? When is it? Okay, I've done enough. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And when he said the people's champ, it's it's got to be bigger than belts now. Yeah, you know what I mean. He's looking at because now it's not about him no more. I, yeah. I'm feeling he's got three beautiful daughters at home, right? So you got to be looking at like you know, like I I'll look at my grandkids. All right, what am I gonna do to set this off for them? Like, cause sooner or later I'm gone, mm. right? For so for him to be able to want to try to you know run for president, it's not a bad idea. One, he's very loved. Two, he's smart. Three, he don't give a f yeah. right? He's going to do what's right. And and I'll tell you why he'll probably make those type of, de type of decisions. It's, you know, he he's, he's looking at his own family. Right. Looking at his girls, right? Like what type of, how can I make a difference before I leave this earth to make sure that my babies and every other baby in this world is going to be safe? You know, at the end of the day, because money can't buy all that. Right. You know what I mean? It's your actions, the words of, you know, the movements of, you know, it takes a village to move things. And so I think, you know, you know look at the power of him just coming back to Monday Night Raw into wrestling. Yeah. That's all people talk about. It yep. didn't take Rock that long to become the number one talk about wrestler in the world. This is what, after 20-something years? Yep. He came right in like he didn't even leave. Whether he's babyface or heel, he it, is. It don't matter, man. Loved. It don't matter. Yeah, you know? yeah. He's just that guy, the goat, as, yeah. as you've said before. So that's um, that's your cousin uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Uh, yeah. That is uh, 1996. We are now uh, still yeah. in the year of 1996. It is now time for Rosie and Jamal, which of course is um, your your cousin Matt yeah. on Hawaii, and your brother Eki. Um, th they first signed, I believe, in 1996 with the Farm League, uh, HWA, I believe it was. Farm League? Yeah, it was before WWE. Mm -hmm. So th they were in a, I, I believe, they was uh, in a Farm League that was uh, kind of underneath WWE for a few months, and then they got called up to the main uh, roster in, I believe, two, yeah. 2002. Okay, well, I know when they got called up, when they got called up. I was the one that took that took them to... Uh, to get their dark match. Um, as far as the farm league, I, I don't recall that. 
uh, I would probably like to call it independence. Yes, sir. Because they both were around. We were in Pensacola, Florida. Mm -hmm. So they were make make the rounds all the way from New Orleans, you know, Louisiana territory. They would move up towards Mississippi and then Alabama area, and they would make that loop right there. But, um, you know, WWE was actually coming to um, to Mobile, Alabama. And so at this time here, you know, they just so happened to be home. And so I would, uh, you know, told them, that, let's go ahead and, you know, I want you guys to come with me. You know, this time the character Rikishi was strong. And so I had a little bit of input, you know. And then I told him, listen, you know, for me, there was not really a tag team, a Polynesian tag team, nor was there a big tag team that can go. And a tag team that was young like these guys here. So we were load up. Of course, I'm taking my family, the twins. Mm -hmm. Solo was in there and a the baby like a car seat. And so, so now I got these two giants with me. You know, both are like 300 pounds, you know, six foot three, five, four, whatever. And now there, one had the Eki had to lay in the back. I had like a suburban, right? And Eki would lay in the back. The third seat, Matt would take up the whole third seat. And then my family would be the second into the. So we would drive like, you know, an hour. They head on to this place. We get there, and then, uh, you know, I introduced the boys to them, and uh, I got them a dark match. So a dark match, you know, meaning before the show start, and this is Monday, before the show start, there's always a match where they'll bring, like, independent guys, you know, to be able to, it's like their NXT back in the day. They would bring their independent guys and just put them out there and put them with a couple uh, uh, enhancement guys, mm -hmm. right? And then, you know, they would see what type of, how these guys can work. Well, when these guys went out, they were called the Island Boys. And uh, when they, I had no I, uh, idea, like, what type of match they're going to, I know they can work, but I've never watched them because they were mm -hmm. on different, you know. And I tell you, dude, they came out there, dude. It's just like, you know, the same place where the, same place where the stink face was born. <laughs> right? So we get out there. And all you can hear, you know, it's like curtain, curtain match. All the boys watching, and you just see Matt and Eki just, man, just going to work. Everything they did, the speed, you know, all the bumps that they were taking. They, they even made the enhancement guy look good. Mm. As I told him, you guys need to go out there just to show them you can work. Don't go annihilate the people, right? Don't go just, you know, just kill the guys. You know, make them something, you know? And so it was that, you know, they, they went out there, boom, in the beginning, they made them. And then when it was time to get heat, boy, you know, you see big, you know, 300-pound guys flying from the top rope. That's where Eki comes off with the splash on the top, you know. You see big Matt, you know, do that some more drop, but except he's jump when he's doing the drop. So they kind of did all the similar moves that, you know, the fans are used to seeing the Samoans do, mm -hmm. but they kind of put a twist on their own. You know, so right when they came back, dude, they got, you know, they got signed up. Yep. And next year, you know, they came out for a bit, and then they were put together with... Uh, Eric Bischoff. The one and only Eric Bischoff. And that brings us to three-minute warning. That's it. What, what was your uh, initial uh, take on the three-minute warning gimmick? Dude, I was happy for them. Because now, the, the, the one thing I love about is they didn't make them come out there like Samoans. Okay. You know, like eating chicken raw, all this yeah. stuff like that. I was so happy that, you know, the company kind of surpassed looking at us like savages, right. like that's all we knew, right? And then this is them, they, you know, put them in, you know, what they were. That's what Eki and Matt were all the time. You know, just, they had like FUBU jerseys mm -hmm. and, you know, some nice Air Jordans and stuff, band down. That was, that was the look anyways, right? And so when the work backed it up mm -hmm. and we can see like, you know, they're just killing people in three minutes, we knew that. I said, okay, I'm happy to see that. This is going to go someplace. But just like anything else, dude, it didn't go too far, right? Something about, like, you know, when, when they start to put the plug on them and start holding these boys down, man, it was a bad, it was a bad emotional vibe amongst, you know, us, meaning that, you know, I felt bad for them. Mm-hmm. Because they waited all this time to get there, and then what is it, right? And so it was that. So, uh, you know, they kind of put a kibosh on it, squashed it. And then I said, hey, you know, this is not the end of the world. 
You know what I mean? If they didn't see the potential in you boys, I suggest you boys go to Japan. Go to Japan, you know, the, the where Muda's at, and I want you to make noise out there and just wait for the right timing for the company to come back, and they will. And so Matt and Aki went out there. They got a job. Mm -hmm. So they were employed for a bit, so they didn't have to worry about, you know, taking care of their families. So that was good, but it still was not like being in WWE. You know what I mean? They were out there in Japan. Japan... Big ups to the companies in Japan because they really take care of wrestlers with respect out there. Be it if you're first main event or first match or whatever in the middle, they look at you with respect just because you're one of the boys you're a wrestler. And so when they came out there, those two got over so quick, you know, and, and after a while they kind of seemed like somewhere down the line they kind of broke up. Matt just, you know, he got into, you know, a few injuries and stuff and you know, knee problems and stuff. And before you know it, he kind of went to Japan less than Eki. Mm -hmm. And by the time Eki, you know, got, you know, doing his single things to, to, uh, in Japan, mm -hmm. they start booking him with Muda. Ooh. That's where you really see Eki's uh, potential. Wow. Right? Because now it's different when, when you're in a tag. You're in a tag, you got two people to depend right, on. Right, of course. But when you're single, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, man, you know, this, yeah, this is where you're going to put up or shut up. Yes, sir. And, you know, he he did that, dude. He did that. So the, the story with uh, with uh, Eki and Matt, that's when that kind of, you know, uh, kind of dissolved mm -hmm. out of the Japan. And during that time, you know, um, Eki would come back and forth uh, for us when we were running in, uh, in Italy. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe that was... NWE. Uh, yeah, and uh, 23, uh, 203 mm -hmm. or 204, I think I left the WWE, right? And then, but we ran a company, NWE, in, mm -hmm. in Italy. And yep. I, I, we ran that, me and uh, Black Pro, we ran that for 10 years. Which trivia, that's the company that hosted uh, Ultimate Warrior's last in-ring match with, Orla go. with Orlando Jordan, by the way. Yes, there you go. It's a uh, good, good memory. Yes, sir, who would later on join forces with Gangrel, Reno, and Rikishi to form Knox Pro, which we're going to get into yeah. eventually. And so while Eki's coming back and forth, full circle, I mean, we he was with us for maybe a year, and we were going every other month. Mm -hmm. You know, Italy was... Man, I almost moved there. It was great, right? And uh, out of the blues, one night the show was over. I was in my room, and uh, me and Reno were going over a few things. And here comes Eki knocking, and he came through. And it was just that look on his eyes, like, man, it, it wasn't a good look, you know? It's that type of look, like you see something happen or, you know. So he said, hey, you guys got a minute. I'd like to talk to you guys, you know? I said, yeah. You good? You say, yeah, I'm, I'm good, you know, but I just got a, I just got a call. Now, when he said I got a call, my heart just started, you know what I mean? Because now yeah. it's like, don't even say it, you know? Right, right. And then he said, you know, I got a call, and uh, it was from WWE. And now it's like, okay, now I kind of felt, you know. No better. So yeah. the older brother, you know, mindset start kicking in. I said, so what's happening? So, well, you know, they, they would like for me to come back, you know. I said, okay. And said, uh, what do you think, you know? He said, well, you know, we got some good here, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I don't I don't know if I want to go back. And uh, so I said, what was the numbers? So he gave me the numbers. And, and so in the meantime, I was thinking in my head, like, I knew how important it was to my brother and what it meant for him to really, really showcase himself in WWE. You know, after he told me that, you know, he didn't want to go and, you know, I, I was the one that told him, listen, you know, this is a, a second chance, of, you know, lifetime that you're mm -hmm. probably going to get, you know, and I know how much you want to, you know, uh, go to WWE and do your thing. And since you need to take this chance, we'll always be here. You go over there and go make that money and go do what you want to do, you know, and get in there and do, do what you got to do. Yes, sir. And, you know, with that, you know, seal of improvement, you know, uh, you know, talking to Eki and he felt a lot better, you know, it was a different vibe through that whole night. So it kind of turned into 
one in the morning talking about it, mm. and by four in the morning we're, we're celebrating. Right. Because we celebrated from one to, you know, I say, oh, we're great. And now you get out there, yeah. make sure, yeah. you know, remember what happened, you know, when they just kicked you out for no, <laughs> take no prisoners, right, you know. Right, right, right. You know, don't trust nobody. And the rest was history. And as we know it, you know, mm. Umaga was born, you know, and uh, now I think the, the next step for his legacy is to put him into the WWE Hall of Famer. You know, no I thought about he, it. He, he, he deserves to be in that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you remember when he when he <laughs> splashed Steve O from Jackass and, yeah. and, and Steve O didn't sell it? <laughs> yeah. and, and, he beat the. <laughs> Yes, he did. He, yes, he yeah, did. I, I think he still held back, though. You know of what I mean? Of course he did. Because who well, still got up after? But I know he was stung for a minute. You know what I mean? Who, who knows? He might have got lawsuit out of What a jackass. Yeah. Fitting, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Wow, man. Yeah, um, Eric, he grabbed him like a damn rag doll. Yes, he did. Yeah, they got that footage. You guys can see it out there on the yes, YouTube. Yes, right? yes, yes. You grabbed, can see it. Like, just swinging him around like, like, like a pit bull got somebody in, in their mouth just... <laughs> you know? Oh, oh my man. God. Um, what, maybe um, br- let's talk about Matt Anuai, uh for a little bit, your cousin. Um, yeah. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about him. Um, Matt it, it, Matt was just, you know, he was easy going. He was like, he was like Bob Marley easy. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, just uh, a guy that never. He ain't never, st- I never seen Matt mad. Wow. You know what I mean? He just laid back. Like when I say laid back, mm. I'm talking Snoop Dogg laid back. Okay. You know what I mean? Just everything is always, ah, don't worry about it. You'll be fine. Just get not like that, you know? But, you know, uh, uh, love family. You know, love the barbecue vibes, the drinking vibes. He always loved the good time uh, when everybody's together. And, mm-hmm. Talk about being a friend. He, I mean, he was core to his friends, man. He, uh, you know, he really, you know, was uh, 100% with a lot of them, you know. And his kids, man, was like the life to him, you know what I mean? He passed away when they were young. But when he had his babies, man, damn, I, I've never seen Matt, you know, so happy and just so proud, you know, his, his daughter and his son, you know. And But Matt was that, you know what I mean? He... Good. He he could have been a. I think he could have been a a real good easy businessman for Roman Reigns. Mm. You know what I mean. I, I think Matt was his forte was learning how to run. Like he, he worked in bars, a lot in New Orleans, right? So he he became you know friends with a lot of people in that industry, and he used to always talk about you know owning his own bar in New Orleans and on Pensacola Beach. You know, so I, I think, it, you know, it, had he been alive today, mm-hmm. that's definitely probably something that, you know, the bloodline would possibly invest into. And no better person to run that would be, you know, Matt, you know. Right. Of course, we, we'll, we'll probably see him toasting most of the time, but at least, you know, nobody's going to come in there and mess up with the bar, you know. You know, that brings me to a, a, a question. Uh, actually, um, I wanted to know, first of all, if it's true or false, because you can't believe everything you read on the Internet but in, in 2003, did Eki have an incident in a, in a bar that might have got him fired from WWE? Um, I don't recall that, uh, Joey. Yes, sir. Um, you know, uh, I, I never uh, back in the day would hear something like that about Eki. And if it was, you know, it, it, to me it was all like, you know, bullshit, right? It's because my brother would always come tell me stuff. You know what I mean? And unless it was something serious, yeah. But I and probably the only time Eki would maybe consider doing something like that is if he's going out with his friends or mm. some of the boys or some of the girls from the roster. It's his uh it's his mentality to protect his friends, right? But I don't ever see him the one starting anything right. or so it might have been that. Maybe somebody tried to hit up on maybe some of the WWE divas or whatever, you know, some of the you know, the boys. And Eki would be that guy to, you know, to kind of defuse the situation, you know? Well, I know you've mentioned it before, and I know Reno's, as Reno's told us specifically after shows, go home. Yeah. Um, 
But like when you're famous and you're in a uh, like, which your advice to uh, famous wrestlers up and coming? You have a name. You're 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 on television. Yeah. What is your advice if you do go to a bar, and how? Um, I mean, because you you got essentially you got a target on your back. If you're famous, people are gonna want to try you. Right. Um, what is your advice to maybe upcoming wrestlers who hang out in the bars and uh, maybe um, something like this happens? I recommend you stay away. Because anytime you go into the public, you're you're that target. You know, I mean, you can't get mad at, I mean, fans coming up to you, you know, in the public place wanting to take a picture with you. They don't know you're tired, nor do they care, right? All they know is that this, this guy or this girl, we see him on TV. Wow, I just want to get a photo. Now, you know, in the environment, in the club, we all know everybody's intoxicated. So if they're coming up on you and they're, slobbing on you or whatever it's not intentional mm. right well, you gotta you gotta figure it out that these people I'm in I put myself in this environment you know so I, I should already be aware of what could happen right and learn how to diffuse the situation so you know is that and I'm sure that in the place they'll have body uh, you know bouncers there mm. you know what I mean so the bouncers they're, you know the club they're happy you're there they want you to have a good time so they're going to keep, you know, keep their eye out for you without even telling you, right? So, but just to be safe with nowadays, you know, they can doctor anything up on video. They can put your ass up on TMZ, whatever the case it may be. It's always best you get back, fly low, go to your own room, make sure you got, if you want a six-pack, get your little six-pack on ice, do it like Iron Sheik. Get the garbage can, rinse it out in the bathtub, put some ice in there, throw the six-pack in there, and that sucker be sitting there by the time you come back to the room. Then you turn around, you order your room service, or go through a drive through get the things that you like, get your food, take it up to the room. Now you're straight, man. Now you're straight. Now you're away from harm's mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. Nobody can come and test you, and you're away from a lawsuit that can possibly happen just like that. Whether you're right or wrong, because it's a WWE brand, WWE is going to pick WWE first. Yes, sir. Right? As much as I love you, Joey, but you work for W, you gave WWE a bad name. Guess what? Okay, here's your Endeavor letter. Have a good one. Yep. But, but yo, man, I, 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 the guy was the first one that came. No. Nope. Right, we don't care. You shouldn't have been there in the first place. Yeah. So that's my advice to your that's upcoming good, wrestlers, good, man. Good, solid advice. Um, no doubt about it. Um, you know, Keish, you're a busy man on the move. We know you got to get out of here. Um, do you have any last words? Well, remember this. It's always free to be kind to one another. And always, always smarten up.